Hello guys, it is me, the Tank Index here, and today we are back with another video, though today we are not talking about British tanks again. We are not talking about French tanks or even American tanks, no, we are not looking at any European country at all, or not even America. We are looking in Asia, in Japan, at the first Japanese tank called the Type 87 Chi, Chi -E, or Chi -I, as I'm going to call it, also known as Experimental Tank Number 1, the first tank in Japanese service, and let's just get right into it. So, the Japan Japanese really began their tank experience by buying, actually, quite a bit of World War I tanks. Uh, they seem to want to really see which World War I tanks actually used, because, you know, Japan, really, I mean, once Matthew Perry sort of just forced open the port of the gun ship diplomacy, they really wanted to modernize, and, you know, first with that really came the Navy, but then after the Navy, you know, they're like, hmm, well, you know, this mechanization thing, we, we, we can give it a try, right? So they kind of bought, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. They bought some Whippets, they bought some Mark IVs, and some FTs. So, you know, they bought a medium, light, and heavy tank, you know, they wanted a bit of each. The project to begin indigenous tank design began in June 20th, or June of 1925, sorry. The original plan was to build a 10-ton tank based off the Renault FT, and a 20-ton tank based off sort of a mixture of the Whippet and the Mark IV. You know, not as, not as weak as the Whippet, but not as, you know, heavy as the Mark IV. Um, four engineers from the motor car division of the Technical Bureau participated in the medium tank prototype, including a young officer named Major Tomio Haro, Hara, who would later become a general and leader of the tank development department. He would later claim that this was the first project to create an indigenous medium tank. Um, sorry, that this first project was to create an indigenous medium tank, which it was. Um, so the Army Technical Bureau had quite a bit of specifications for this tank. They really wanted their first foray to be able to meet the match of what they wanted. It had to have mobility, so more mobility than the Mark IV tanks, but also be able to attack strong field positions, so like bunkers and stuff. It had to have a 57mm main gun, and also the armor plating to withstand a 57mm gun, as well as rear-mounted machine guns. It had to be capable of crossing 25 meter trenches and climb at 43 degree obstacles, it had to have five crew members, which was, you know, above the mark. Um, it had to have the frame to allow railroad transportation, even though Japan really didn't have as a very good railroad system in general. They were thinking ahead, at least. It had to have only one driver and be able to be operational for at least ten hours, which, I mean, that was quite a lot for the time. Um, it was labeled the experimental tank number one. I'll be honest, that Japanese script is copied from Wikipedia because I don't know Japanese, and also I don't even know how to type Jap Japanese characters into Google. Um, it was sent to the 4th Military Laboratory of the Okubo District. Despite only having two years to be made, they had to design everything from st fresh. Literally, they had even had to design the nuts and bolts for this vehicle. They had nothing to start off, start off with. Despite this, it was finished in May of 1926, less than a year later, and production was ordered to begin the Osaka Army Arsenal. The poor industry in the Japan at the time caused quite a bit of difficulties in producing the prototype, but it was completed by February of 1927, meeting the deadline. So, you know, I mean, that's pretty respectful. They did this really well. This is almost like the Sten gun of tank prototypes. Um, the tank had a Type 90 57mm cannon, just like requested, along with a machine gun in the front and another one in the small rear turret. Having riveted steel plate armor ranging from 6 to 17 millimeters, it weighed 20 tons, which, you know, pretty good. While Hara later designed the bell crank scissor suspension system, and this one just really used a complex suspension system with two pairs of bogies per leaf spring arrangement, which was honestly way more complex than it needed to be. They really had to simplify this down if they ever wanted to do mass production. Um, it only had a, four, four, eight, a V8 140 horsepower engine, which was quite underpowered. Um, many members of the army and you know general staff attended its trials at the Fuji training grounds. The general staff office was not impressed, mainly due to this underpowered engine, and a new requirement was issued for a lighter 10-ton tank. The new design would be modeled after the Vickers Medium Mark C, a modified Medium Mark II which Japan had purchased in 1927. This is a Medium Mark II right here. Um, by April of 1928, the, the design was finished with a prototype... Fin sorry, sorry. In April of 1928, the new design was finished and a prototype was later completed in 1929, and designated the Type 89 Igo. The Type 89 Chiro or Igo, it has both those names, was developed to fix the shortcomings of the 87 Chi prototype. The 89 was labeled a medium tank since it was over 10 tons, and while shorter and lighter than the Chi, it had increased armor plating. Since the Sagami arsenal still really lacked the ability to have mass production, a contract was instead given to Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, which built a new tank factory just for this model. 
Um, production of the Type 89 began in 1931, and it would become the main tank of the Imperial Japanese Army, even though by World War II it was less than amazing. So, you know, while this experimental tank really didn't go anywhere by itself, it did inspire, really, a very influential tank for the Japanese. Um, on to the final assessment, the Type 87 GI wasn't a very good tank. It was a multi turret design, already a flaw, and in Japan's case of low industry and material supply, just another flaw. To be fair though, it was Japan's first go to tank concept and was made by people with literally no experience other than obsolete decade old tanks. However, this far away into the you know world of armor did later lead to the Type 89 Igo, which was a much better tank. Um, so while the Type 87 Chi itself wasn't the best design, it at least paved the way to better ones, which is respected by itself. This was basically the little willy of tank of Jap Japan's tanks. So I do hope you enjoyed the video. You know, finally getting out of Europe or um, the Americas. Um, next time we're going, going to go back to England. I know, guys, we've had a lot of British content here, but that's just kind of how it works. So I hope you guys see you all there. Until then, have a nice day.